What happens when you get into debt? That's your name. It's not my name. And you can't or won't pay it back. In this special programme, we meet more people who face losing their homes. We need more than two hours. I don't want to come back here. Please. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It can't be done. Their cars. Can I get the keys? Yes. How do I know I'm going to get the car back? And their possessions. We catch up with past stories. It's not a, just a call for me. That, that was a, everything to me and hit the road again with those whose job it is to enforce the law. If you don't open the door, we'll smash the glass. There's always a reason why the landlord isn't entitled to have his property back. Because when you can't pay... Don't speak to me like because I'll take your head off. ..they'll take it away. There's, like, different forms of scum in life, but you're just a higher-class one. Take it now. The number of calls to helplines from tenants struggling with rent arrears increased by 13% in the last 12 months, more than any other debt type. Many fear they won't be able to keep a roof over their heads, according to a new report. It doesn't matter who you are or how wealthy you are, debt can still have a devastating effect on your life. Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner are High Court Enforcement Officers. They're part of an elite group whose sole aim is to hunt down debts from those who can't pay. We have a warrant that allows us to break in. And those who won't pay. Don't be a problem. Most of the people that we meet are in denial. Denial on two fronts. One is that the debt exists, and the second and critical point is that they don't think it will have gone this far. Today, Paul and Steve are on their way to one of the most affluent areas in the country. They've come to track down a wealthy businessman who hasn't paid his rent for more than six months. Well, it's a posh area, isn't it? Well, it looks like it. We just don't know till we get there. It's just slightly story. different, isn't it, from the usual... In central London. <laughs> oh, that one we did yes, the other oh. day. <laughs> they've brought along Steve's son, Ben, who they've been training up to join the team. The businessman who owes the money lives in this huge house. He runs a technology company, but he's racked up more than £23,000 in rent arrears. With £3,000 in court costs, he's now on the books for a whopping £26,000. How oh, nice. Quite up market. Paul and Steve are here to evict the tenant and his family in just two hours. Not only that, if the tenant can't pay off the debt today, the writ instructs the officers to seize his possessions in order to cover the debt. Hello, sir. Hello. We're from the High Court. We have a repossession order for this property. Right. Despite not paying the rent for more than six months, the tenant is still caught off guard. We, we knew that there was a possession order that had been put forward, but we had no idea when the date was no. for this. This is a High Court repossession order as opposed to a, you know, ordinary repossession order. That's a copy for you, sir. Right, OK. Um... If I can give you the worst possible news first, and then right. we can work backwards from that. Right. Because we are quite reasonable people. The house has to be repossessed today. We will change the locks, do whatever we need to. You will have to leave today. Now, if you need to come back for possessions that you can't take now, that's OK. We can arrange to meet you back here. I don't know whether... Is it rented, furnished, unfurnished, or it's what? Rent, it's, it's, it's our property. It's, it's our, sorry, um, stuff in here. All of it? Yeah. So it's rented, unfurnished? Yeah. OK, so you'll need to make arrangements to move the furniture yes, and put it into storage and or whatever. There's also an outstanding... Uh, rent, I'm presuming it's a rent cost on there, which is quite substantial, 23,456. Yes, which I was, I've just literally been talking to Mrs. Okay. today to pay part of it off. 
Well, how and could, can you possibly pay off the rest well, of it? Hopefully within the next week or so. OK. So what do we need to do? We need that? to see if we can contact her direct what on the phone. Do you want to come yeah, in and thank do you. that? Yeah. While the tenant thought that he was still in negotiation with the landlord to stay in the house, the landlord has taken the case to the High Court. The system as it works is that they would have got a possession order from, from a it county, it from a county I've court. I've been uh, having discussions with her about paying this off, so I thought we were in... What's changed quite dramatically is that she, or the agents, have decided to to up this, to like, ratchet it up to the High Court. And we don't give notice, we just turn up, as you Yeah, find. yeah, well, that's clear. The tenant claims he is confronting what millions of small business owners face, a cash flow crisis. He's been used to a comfortable living and expects to again, but right now there is nothing in the bank. The situation is that we are totally stony broke at the moment. How much could you pay today? And we can do credit nothing, card. Nothing today. And, okay. and the reason I can't do it is because a cheque was paid in on Monday and doesn't clear till tomorrow. And I can show that. I've actually sent her a yeah. scheduled payment of £3,000 for tomorrow. OK. Have you got any money? Uh, no. Even if it, no. Sorry, let me... Even if it was just £100. No, I haven't. If people say they're going to give you money, it's like it takes forever to get it. I know. And, and that's been a real problem for me. The people that get into debt in life is just everybody, you know. We're all, we all have the capabilities of slipping from one reason to another, whether it's you lose your job, you lose your partner, you know, everything can throw you into debt. Stephen Paul's first task is to repossess the property. They change the locks so that the family can't get back in. The tenants must now gather up their belongings quickly and leave. Because the debtor can't pay, the team now has some calculations to make. Ben and Steve go through each room taking an inventory of everything he owns, which will be seized and sold to cover the debt. What we do need to do is to take some photographs of the inside of the house and to um, just make a list. During the search, Ben discovers some Rolex watches that could be worth thousands. He'll check their serial numbers to see if they're genuine. And there's a car on the drive. You've got a vehicle out there, is that on finance or is no, that No, no, yours? that's actually owned by a company in Belgium. OK. During the repossession process, people are totally shocked at the, the speed and the, um, the enormity of the problem they're confronted with. We are there and within two hours they'll be standing outside the door. With debts of more than £26,000 and no cash to pay it off, the tenants will be homeless in hours, and all their possessions will be seized. But Paul has a plan. A businessman is facing eviction from his home with all his belongings seized because he has run up a debt of £26,000. Have you got any money? No. Even if it, no, sorry, let me... Even no, if it was just £100. No, I haven't. Paul has been talking to the debtor. He finds out that the businessman has been waiting for a new shareholder to inject a vital sum of cash into his technology company. But the money has yet to arrive. I got into trouble because people weren't paying me. And then I sold 10% of my company, yeah. which is currently what the money is that's coming in for 150,000. Okay. And that will then, you know, clear this. If the debtor has the means to pay the rent soon, it will be better for everyone to give him more time. Paul decides to see if the landlord will agree to let the tenant stay in the house, providing he comes up with £10,000 by tonight and the rest within two weeks. Being the nice person that Paul is from time to time, he's now going to try and strike up a deal with the landlady to give them a little bit more breathing space. The landlord agrees. The tenant now has a potential lifeline and goes into action. If we have to make uh, a payment to you... Yeah. Um, it could be my credit card direct payment. Yeah, but I need a, a bank account to pay that too. We've got the paperwork. He's got everything on there. But the big question is, can he do it today? The clock is ticking. OK, 
Okay. I'll leave you to it. Think it all over. I'm on the phone. You've got my number. In the meantime, Benny's here. He's got all the paperwork, so if there's any queries on it, you've got it. Thank you very much. We're leaving Ben here as the man in possession. So, in other words, we're not abandoning the situation. He's as good as us being here. We'll then go on to the next job. In the meantime, the guy here is making all sorts of frantic phone calls to try and get a quite substantial amount of money together. Our personal debt mountain is getting bigger and bigger. And with debt rising, one of the most frequently seized items is our cars. Hundreds are repossessed every week, with more and more people getting that dreadful knock on the door. Mike Allenby and Terry Jones work for Nemesis, a car repossession company covering the northwest of England. Mike, a former private detective, has been doing car repossessions for some time, but Terry is new to the game. Right, Renault Clio Dynamic. Today, they're on their way to Liverpool to repossess a vehicle on a tough estate in Merseyside. God, this is a place, isn't it? Hard proper around here, mate. Proper. Hired by private finance companies, they are paid by results. This one. Yeah, but it's a it? Yeah. The more cars they recover, the more money they make. Uh, excellent. A good month can net them over a hundred motors. We've got the car here, we're clamping it now. The owner owes several hundred pounds on a loan he's taken out against the value of the car. Short-term schemes like these provide quick access to cash with no credit checks but often come with huge interest rates. Got it. Some as high as 400%. And when you can't pay, Mike and Terry get the call. Because of the, the type of finance that's on it, the vehicle doesn't actually belong to the person that's took the finance out on it until they've paid it off. With a clamp on, Mike wants to give the owner the chance to pay up. When you knock on the door, your face is the first real face that these people have seen. So everything else has been conducted via letters or telephone calls. So they usually tend to vent their spleen at you at the door. Can hear a dog. Hear a dog yeah. Whether the owner's home or not, they can still take the car, as long as the finance company have given the go-ahead. Got a mobile number. Yeah. So give him a ring. Mike and Terry have no idea how many letters or phone calls the car owner has received chasing up the bad debt. They're only here for one thing, and that's the car. Uh, we're repossession agents and we're currently outside your property. Um, we have your vehicle on clamp. I wondered if you could give us a call back, please. Um, we can wait half an hour and then we'll have to remove the vehicle. OK, cheers. Thank you. Then the phone goes. Hello? It's the office. Oh, OK, then. OK, all right. Sorry? <laughs> well... Apparently, he said he's going to come outside and set fire to it. OK. That's good. All right, then. Cheers for the heads up. All right, it's up. No barbecue time, is it? <laughs> Just watch our backs, that's all. Can't do anything else. At the end of the day, you're there to collect the car. And it's an asset. It belongs to the finance company, our client. And we have to protect that. The car owner is back. What are you filming for? Take the cameras. What are you? You can't. I'm, I don't. I'm giving you permission to film. But I'll rag that and I'll smash it all over the street. Excuse me. 
There's quite often threats are made in that manner, be whatever it is, if I threaten to throw bricks out the window or things, all kinds of stuff like that. And you can find yourself just laughing it off, really. But it, it can turn out that they will do what they're threatening to do. What are we going to do? With that amount of aggression and threats, I need to finish our paperwork off, see if he calms down, and then, if he doesn't, call the police. Just keep your eye on him. Have you got the keys, though? Have you got the keys? No. OK. Let me know if he's locking it again. Collection time. Collection date. You a bully? The last time I checked. No, me neither. With the car now damaged, Mike calls the office. Hey, Glenn. Yeah, the guy's just turned up, put a crowbar through the windscreen, threatened everybody. Just... Well, he's got in a car now. Do you want us to...? We have to ring the police. OK, cheers. All right, trot, trot. Glenn says you have to report it, cos he says it's criminal damage. A short while later, the police arrive. The loan secured against the car means the vehicle belongs to the finance company rather than the owner. He's now smashed up their property and not his own. So what he's done is he's secured a loan against the car and he hasn't paid a penny for it. Do you want a copy of that? It's all there that you need, love. As Mike and Terry start loading up, the car owner returns. When I first started the job, and people would get abusive and things like that. I did feel the urge to respond. From the word go, Mike has shown me how to do it correctly. It doesn't matter what people are saying. I don't take it personal. It doesn't land. It's just, it's just there to do a job, and that's what we do. Watch the glass, look. The car owner is arrested and taken away for questioning. He was charged and found guilty of causing criminal damage. He was given a conditional discharge for 12 months and ordered to pay £115 in costs and fines. But with so many cars to repossess every day, the team know the next hostile situation may be just a door knock away. Paul and Steve have given a Buckinghamshire businessman an ultimatum. He's got to find £10,000 or be evicted from his home. The property has been repossessed and Steve's son Ben has been left in charge while the tenant makes urgent calls to find the money from somewhere. If he doesn't, all his belongings will be seized and sold to set against the debt. In the meantime, Paul and Steve are busy on another case. This has now been passed up to the High Court. So we're here to collect. Basically. Collect what? Fourteen hundred pound ninety-six p. I haven't got anything until the end of the month. Okay, your car? 
Well, it's finance, yeah. It's on finance, OK, that's fine. I'll accept that. No joy here. So Paul and Steve's attentions return to the businessman. His time is up. Paul calls Ben at the house to see if the tenant has managed to raise the 10 grand. Has there been any changes since we last spoke? Um, a couple. Yeah. Uh, it's short £20. Short by £20? Yeah, he's got 9980 OK. I've spoken to the estate agents. Yes. Um, they have agreed to release the deposit, so we now have another 4500 to go towards the debt. OK. So, the, so, just recapping then, the effect of our visit today has produced 15 and a half grand. Yeah. And then we're holding so walking possession. Tomorrow. Is that still going to go ahead? Yep, he said that's still going ahead. Wow. So that's 18 and a half. Yeah. The tenant's okay. frantic phoning has produced a short term long. loan from a relative. Paul's strategy has paid off. What we've actually achieved is out of a debt of 26,000, we've got 18,000 effectively today. We're holding the contents of the house and the car and his Rolex watches and everything else under a walking possession agreement, which he will sign. The family will be allowed to stay in the house. We'll be in close contact with them. So the balance of the payments are made and probably the tenancy can be restored. That's what you call a result, isn't it? Yeah. Nice. 18 and a half grand of a £26,000 debt, just by squeezing gently. Mm -hmm. Paul and Steve return to the house. The mood is more relaxed. Oh, yeah. You're a gentleman, sir. I think all the more of you now. Well, you said you like to stand a spoon up in it. Uh, it's going to be, <laughs> quite honestly, like concrete now. The debtor still owes £9,000 in rent and court costs, including the £1,000 to have Paul and Steve on the doorstep. Paul has given him two weeks to come up with the cash. The tenant is confident he can do it if the money from his company comes in on time. That's lucky because the value of his possessions is much less than Paul and Steve had hoped for. Do you want a selection of fake watches? Well, crap. As time goes on, it's going to be harder and harder to extract money, or more particularly, to extract goods, because they've sold off everything. You know, we thought we had a whole collection of Rolex watches there. They turned out all to be fake. Not everyone has someone to turn to when they hit a financial wall. This time, the tenant has been lucky. We just leave you with one key. Is that OK? That's fine. With the instruction that you're not allowed to cut more. And we've still got a key. These people have got a result because they're going to stay here. They could have been kicked out in the street. They haven't been. Uh, yes, it's cost them dearly because we don't come cheap, but that's the result. They're still home and dry. So it just means that you've just got to make a stand. Next, Steve and Paul move on to an even bigger house with a very different outcome. According to Ministry of Justice figures for 2012, the number of tenants in England and Wales forcibly evicted from their homes after court action were the highest since records began in the year 2000. High Court Enforcement Officers Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner's next job is an eviction from a property in Kingston. It's the biggest house they've ever been instructed to recover. This is the nicest house we've ever repossessed. A house like this must be worth five million, I reckon. You know, you could put my house in that bit of garden there. The occupants have been babysitting the house for property developers who have new plans for this site. It's a straightforward repossession, but the story behind it is this property is going to be demolished. For the family who are still here, are of Palestinian origin, and they, um, they were caretakers here. They're no longer caretakers here. They've been given proper notice to quit. Installed to deter squatters, the occupants have continued to enjoy this palatial home and are now sitting tenants. They also owe 800 pounds in legal costs. Paul and Steve are here to evict them and recover the debt. 
Hello? Hello? Anybody here? The place is huge, it's like a maze. What a shame to knock this down, isn't it? There's no sign of the tenants in the main house, so it's the tradesman's entrance round the back for Paul and Steve. Hello? Hi. But we, we have to leave after 21 days. No, no, today is today. the day, yes. The appearance of two sheriffs isn't a surprise for the women, but the notice period is a real shock. You've had the eviction order. No, we haven't received any letter. Oh. We checked yesterday <clears throat> and there is mm. no mail. I don't think we have, we have enough time to do it today. But you have two hours to take your personal belongings out and if you need to come back again to remove the rest of the stuff, that can be done by appointment. You can't... I need more than two hours. I don't want to come back here, please. Well, no, I'm sorry, it can't be done. We're now going through the usual thing, tears. The other lady who's with her is actually a sister-in-law. <clears throat> um, her husband's off looking for a flat now, so all of this defies what she's just told us, but they didn't realise they had to be out today. Well, that's OK, we accept that, because the High Court is <clears throat> quite rapid. Proceedings issued in the High Court are the ultimate sanction to get a sitting tenant out immediately. There's always a reason why they're entitled to stay and why the landlord isn't entitled to have his property back. Perhaps I'm just being cynical. Surely. Could that be possible? Mm, so, so. Cynicism based on 50 years of experience. The 50 years of cynicism. Steve's taken the keys from the tenants and put up the repossession notice. 40 minutes later, the ex-caretaker returns. Do you understand what's happening here? I'm not sure. Yeah, but they've got two weeks to move it. Move it. This was actually changed to the High Court yesterday. Yeah. which means that we come in straight away. There is no notice given. We will be out by all today. We will find a place. It's time limit, really. Yeah, yeah, well, that's where we're going to start. No, now. that's fine. That's I okay. arranged already the van is going to come now. That's fine. So that's, you do it now, as yeah. fast as you can. The husband has called in some friends to remove everything they own today. It's all going swimmingly well, isn't it? Yeah. The sheriff's authority seems to have diffused a potentially volatile situation. I actually think it's the fancy dress that does that. So we're not purporting to be the police, and nobody has ever said that we are. Following the shooting of a bailiff in Brixton a few months ago, uh, we went out the very next day and we bought bulletproof vests. The immediate impression is police. So since we've been wearing bulletproof vests and looking like this, uh, we have less resistance. The tenants are piling their possessions high to get out in one hit, because coming back means paying for the sheriffs again. The building's secured and everything's turned off to ensure no one is running up any unnecessary utility bills. You'll Thank be you lucky. very much. OK, Thanks. take care. Thank you. And the caretaker has also cleared his debt, the high court costs of around £800. That's all done and dusted. It's taken a bit longer than we thought. Quarter to three. It should have been gone by half past twelve, but that's OK. The biggest house Paul and Steve have ever repossessed is back in the hands of the developers. Now the tenants have gone, the house probably won't be here for much longer. In the last series, Paul and Steve found themselves in Romford. They had a writ to collect £3,000 of rent arrears. You can run a point on this one, Steve. Okay. The man named on the writ works as a taxi driver. Hi there. Looking for Mr. Ali's If he can't pay the £3,000, they could take his car away. Hi there. Hi. Sorry to wake you up. Mr. Aliza. There is a warrant outstanding, and the amount is £3,253.04p, and p plus a £440. It's not me. They made a mistake. It's not me. They, they sent to the court also. That's not me. There's a different person. Who is it? It's my brother. 
No, I'm not responsible for my brother. You should go and get them, not me. You're sheriff. I'm a sheriff, yeah. I'm a sheriff, Aliza. I'm not. Well, my, this, if you need an ID, I bring an ID for okay, you. Okay, but, but look, you see. Mr. Ali Zadar claims that the debt is his brother's, but the writ is made out in his name. I didn't pay that rent for that house, which is, it wasn't me, it's a different person, if he's my brother. So where is Mr. whoever it is? Ask them, not me. He's your brother? Yeah, he's my brother. So you must know where he is. <laughs> yeah, I know, you should find him and go and tell them. Well, OK, can I just be very simple about this? Just really, really simple. Is this your vehicle? Yeah, he is. OK. This is from the courts. Yeah. The highest court in the land that empowers me to take your car, unless you can pay this debt. Paul and Steve have no idea whether he is telling the truth or not. A high court writ is rarely wrong. The way to get to the truth is just to keep talking. And all the time you're talking, you're asking the same questions in different ways, but you're looking for an inconsistency in the answer. Where is your brother? It's my brother. He's in this country. Go and get him. Well, we don't no. need to, because we're going to take the car That's away. fine. You can take it in my car. OK, can you give the keys? Huh? Give us keys. I'm not going to give the key. Why should we give the key? Can you get your brother on the phone, then? I'm hmm. not going to put him on the phone. Well, that's OK. We'll just take the car. I'll call a recovery truck. Look, listen, there's an easy way of doing it or there's a hard way. No, it's not a hard way. If it's, I'm not responsible for that. Unless you prove that. to us that this is not you. Have you got the logbook for that vehicle out there? Yeah, of course I've got Let's a logbook. Please. But before Paul calls the tow truck, he rings his office to check out the man's story and whether the writ is correct. And the truth is surprising. They have the wrong man. Right, he's obviously, covering, he's obviously covering for his brother. His brother is a completely different person. None of this paperwork applies to... He explained to us that it wasn't him and it, it was his brother. But if your name is on that writ, you are then liable for what it says. All the taxi licences, all of that paperwork shows that this warrant, the name on this warrant, is against this man. But in the meantime, since we've actually come and knocked on the door, we've had an email that says the name on the warrant is wrong. It's now up to Mr Ali Zadar, not the court, to prove his innocence. <coughs> He's currently legally liable for the debt. But Paul and Steve have a plan to soften the blow. I'm going to seize that car outside but leave it with you. I will write paperwork that shows that the, the sheriff's office yeah. Now owns the taxi. Yeah. Yes. You then carry on using it while I sort the paperwork out. But if the mistake is not as you say it is, but you're a reasonable man, I can come back and take the taxi. Just so long as you understand that. Yeah, yeah. I understand. And if you do, if you don't produce it when I ask you to, it will be reported as stolen. Mr. Alizadar now has two weeks to challenge the writ in court, or risk not just losing the vehicle but also his livelihood. He has a family and three children to support. There's obviously a mistake, or sorry, potentially a mistake, but we, I'm happy with what I've done because I can still come back not smiling if it goes wrong. Yeah. Right, in the meantime, if you want to save all this aggravation, ring your brother and get him to call me. Paul and Steve are returning to Romford. The debt has risen by a further £700, and Mr Alizadar hasn't been to court. So while Paul and Steve know he's the wrong man, the writ commands them to collect on the debt. The bloke has not uh, made an arrangement to pay yet, so we're going to go back and give him the bad news that we're expecting him to pay, which is £3,915 today. I'm going to lead on it to you. Did the last time he you thinks you're Mr. Nice Guy. Hi, how are you? I'm OK, how are you? Very well, thank you. Thank you. Um, we still have a problem. We haven't heard from anybody with regards to this. So the situation is now that because your name is on all our paperwork, yeah. we are coming to you for this. Because this has come from the High Court, mm -hmm. 
the, the writ has been done, it's in your name, yeah, it's and in my name. you're responsible for it as far as the High Court is concerned. The last thing I want to do, or sorry, we want to do, is to take your car away. Because okay. it's a nuisance to us, it's a nuisance to you, and it might all go wrong. Listen, if in real, real terms, how much money could you get now? The um, money, I can get two, three hundred pounds. No, no, we're looking for £2,000 yeah, at least. I can give you two, three hundred pounds With the deadline up and Mr Alizadar unable to pay the debt, Paul is duty-bound to enforce the warrant. The sheriffs have to seize the taxi. I'm only concerned this warrant's telling me what to do and I'm, I'm actually going to do what the warrant tells me to do. That's fine. You want to the car? Let him bring the key and take my yeah. stuff from here. If I was in this gentleman's shoes, I'd have been on the phone to my brother and asked him, what have you done? What's the situation? Why have you got these people knocking on my door? But he seemed to be reluctant to do that. I don't know why. It also means that Mr Alizadar will be without his family transport and out of work. I'm sorry to have to do this. That's fine, but... that's fine. It isn't fine, and I feel just as bad about it, but, you yeah, know... You gave me a chance last time. I did. Which is, uh, we thought he's finished. Yeah. And you're not going to come back. It's cost uh, £444 for our attendance today to remove it. So it's, it's just cost him another £450, if you like, plus whatever the other costs are on it. So the, the debt started off at 2400 It's nigh on 4000 now. This is where it goes out of control. And the easiest way to resolve this is to get the money. Mm -hmm. That's the easiest way, and fight about it afterwards. Because every day that we've got this car, you're losing your wages. Thank All right, sir. So you want is there anything... Think, is there anything... Tea, coffee, cold drink? No, sir, we're OK, thank you. <laughs> we're OK. He's a really nice guy, though. I mean, you take the man's car away and he's living away and he invites you in for coffee. Take care, sir. Okay, if, if we can get this solved in a few days, we'll bring you back. I hope you Thank you. All right. I hope that we're going to sort Okay. Thanks very much. Bye bye. I haven't got no car. I lost my job. I take my kids to the school in the morning and I'll see my work. Now, Mr. Alizadar has two weeks either to pay the money or get the writ changed. If he doesn't, his taxi will be sold. An estimated seven million people use high cost credit in order to cover income shortfalls or meet unexpected expenditures. Many low income households have no savings, borrowing against their assets to cope. This morning, Mike Allenby and Terry Jones are en route to repossess a people carrier that's been used as security on a loan. The debtor has missed repayments and is now hundreds of pounds in arrears. The difficulty with these yeah. sort of jobs, especially when the asset is a vehicle, the vehicle is used every day. Yeah. They gotta work like everybody else, so You've only got, like, a window of opportunity, haven't you? Yeah. A lot of people work during the day. They get up early and they go to work in the car. So, obviously, we have to get up before they do, get to the, get to the property, try and find the car before they head off. Hey, There it is. That's it. Hey, love, I've got a repossession order for the vehicle. Oh, you're joking, I've just come out of hospital yesterday. Have you? Yeah, he's going to check to confirm them later. Well, not while we're here, there isn't, love. I've got three options. Yeah. You can either make a payment, which if you knocked on my door this time in the morning, I couldn't do. Yeah. Um, two, I can take the car and put it in our pound and give you a couple of days to sort it out. Or if you refuse to, I've just got to take the car, though. Oh, 
I need my car to take the kids to school. I've been in hospital for the past month and came out yesterday. The only money I've got on me is £20 cash. No. So what am I going to do? It's 7 o'clock in the morning. If there was any other way I could help you, I would, though. Right, if I, if I give you the keys... Yes? I found something. How do I know I'm going to get the car back? I understand, but I understand. If you give us the keys, I'll find out what the outstanding is and I'll put my contact details on it so you have a point of contact and a face you know. Can you come in a minute? No, I can... I tell you what, if my colleague can come in with me, I will come in. It's not common practice to do that, but she was in a distressed state. We needed to make sure that she was OK. Are we OK? Yeah, I'm quite... It's all right. We've got kids ourselves, yeah. still. <laughs> Calm down, love. It's OK. It says repo, but it means if you said to me now, Mike, here's £500, go away, I'd be gone. I can get this car back. I, I promise I'll bring your car back, though. OK? This particular time, there was um, small children, two babies, in the other room. She said, do you mind if I go and f feed the babies? And she, she got the bottles and she went and fed the babies. It's not a problem at all, you know? Not there to be horrible. First thing you need to do is ring them up at 9 o'clock, yeah. explain the situation, make sure you explain the situation properly to them. Oh, do you mind to be a famous man? <laughs> <laughs> That's the nicest thing anyone's said. Look, I've been where you are, though. I really have. I know exactly what it feels like to be in debt. It's just not a nice place to be. You've... You've no idea. You dread letters coming through the door. You dread knocks on the door. I mean, I was... Uh, when I lost everything, I was in a hell of a place. You've got my number, All right, OK? Very if much. you have any difficulties, you give me a call, OK? And I'll sort it out. All right, thank you. OK. Cheers. Unless the owner can find the cash to pay, this could be the last she sees of her car. In Romford, a week ago, Mr Ali Zadar watched powerless as Paul and Steve repossessed his taxi. OK, thanks very much. It's not a, just a call for me. That, that was a, everything to me. That was my business, that was my work, that was, was my job. Support the family from that, with that car. It was very hard for me on that time. I lost my job. Yeah, it wasn't good. But now there is some good news. After going to a solicitor to get the writ against him cancelled, the sheriffs have returned his taxi. When he came, he bring the, the, my car back, and they said, thank you, that's the first time I saw the guy which is not guilty. After that, I was happy, and yeah, since I could get my car back, I start back the next day. And after... Four or five days, I, my solicitor, they receive a letter from that side. They offer, we're going to pay for your solicitor and uh, not the loss. I said, no, you have to pay for my loss as well. Because you made a mistake, why should I pay for it? And he paid 1,500 pounds for solicitor and 200 for my loss. All my family happy.